Welcome everyone. Today, we will examine the European sovereign debt crisis, which stretched from 2009 to 2019. This was a decade-long crisis that tested the Eurozone's stability and reshaped financial governance in Europe. We will review the timeline, the key parties involved, what happened, why it happened, how it unfolded, how it ended, and which countries were affected. In 2009, newly elected Greek Prime Minister George Papandreou revealed that Greece's budget deficit was 12.7% of GDP, far higher than previously reported. This credibility shock rattled investors and triggered the start of the Eurozone debt crisis. In 2010, Greece received its first bailout of 110 billion euros from the European Union and the International Monetary Fund. In exchange, Greece had to implement austerity measures, sparking massive protests and strikes. By 2011, the crisis spread to Ireland and Portugal, both of which required bailouts. Eurozone leaders established the European Financial Stability Facility to provide support. Investor confidence remained shaky. In 2012, the crisis intensified. Spain faced banking sector stress and Italy's borrowing costs surged. Then came a turning point. European Central Bank President Mario Draghi declared that the ECB would do, quote, whatever it takes to preserve the euro. This statement calmed markets. In 2013, Cyprus required a bailout after its banks collapsed, leading to a controversial depositor bail-in. By 2015, Greece once again faced default fears and received its third bailout, with heated debates over whether Greece might leave the Eurozone. By 2018, Greece officially exited its bailout programs, marking the symbolic end of its crisis phase. In 2019, Eurozone bond yields stabilized, and the decade-long sovereign debt crisis was broadly considered over. The key parties included national governments such as Greece, Ireland, Portugal, Spain, Italy, and Cyprus. European institutions like the EU, the ECB, and the European Commission played central roles. The IMF was heavily involved in financing bailouts. Private investors, banks, and credit rating agencies were also critical. And, importantly, millions of citizens bore the costs of austerity and economic hardship. The crisis began when high deficits and debt levels became unsustainable, particularly in Greece. Investors demanded higher interest rates to lend, pushing several countries out of markets. Bailouts and austerity followed, triggering political and social upheaval. The crisis had multiple causes. Fiscal mismanagement and misreporting of statistics undermined credibility. The global financial crisis weakened banks and public finances. The Eurozone's design flaws, monetary union without fiscal union, left countries vulnerable. Finally, contagion dynamics amplified investor fear. Mechanically, credit rating downgrades and rising borrowing costs created a vicious cycle. Bailout mechanisms such as the European Financial Stability Facility and later the European Stability Mechanism were created. The ECB's interventions, especially Draghi's 2012 pledge, were pivotal in calming markets. By the end of the decade, bailout programs had concluded and bond yields returned to sustainable levels. Structural reforms, stronger fiscal oversight, and unconventional monetary policy stabilized the Eurozone. However, the crisis left lasting scars. High unemployment, political populism, and skepticism toward European integration. The most severely affected countries were Greece, Ireland, Portugal, Spain, Cyprus, and Italy. Other Eurozone members experienced stress through rising borrowing costs. Globally, the crisis spread through financial contagion and reduced trade, affecting economies far beyond Europe. The European sovereign debt crisis of 2009 to 2019 revealed weaknesses in the euro's architecture and underscored the dangers of fiscal mismanagement. While the crisis ultimately led to stronger institutions and policies, it left behind profound economic and political consequences. 
For finance professionals, it remains a crucial case study in crisis management and international financial stability. This concludes our discussion about the European sovereign debt crisis of 2009 to 2019. See you at the next lecture.